we're going to start with Hadoop administration. So point number one, Hadoop administration requires some level of administration knowledge. I'm quite sure that you could have probably figured it out uh, by this time. For example, any, any administration task requires some level of basic knowledge of installation, configuration, and troubleshooting, right? Same with Hadoop administration also. So ideally, if somebody is concentrating on Hadoop administration, that means uh, he or she is coming from a administration background, say a Windows administrator, a Linux administrator, a network administrator, so these are the kind of roles um, or, or, or people who really fit into uh, Hadoop administration, right? Because Hadoop administration is all about installing a cluster, then uh, looking at the properties, uh, troubleshooting sometimes, verifying the logs, you know? Uh, it is not at all related to development, right? So development is a whole different area, right? Administration is a whole different area. and Ideally, so even though we say that uh, there is no prerequisite for Hadoop administration, but I would like to say that there are certain prerequisites. One is that you have to be good at Linux, Linux or Unix, right? So when I say good, you have to be really good in fact. Now, why this is a requirement is because most of the Hadoop installations in the world are on Linux and Unix, right? So chances are very high that if you're working as a Hadoop administrator, you will work on a Linux machine or a Unix machine. And Hadoop administration does not mean like you're only looking at Hadoop, right? You might have to troubleshoot the operating system, the dependencies, and so many other things. So you have to be really good at Linux or Unix, point number one. When I say uh, good, that means good at administration. You know, you need to have a good idea about different flavors of Linux, package management, updations, the editors, roles, groups, all these things, you need to have a thorough idea, right? That is on the Linux or Unix side. Now, Windows is very less, uh, actually. The, the Hadoop installations on Windows platform is very, very rare. Very rare, in fact, I have never seen uh, a Windows-based uh, uh, Hadoop installation. So, so that is one uh, point, right? The second point is that you need to have some idea at, uh, about network administration. Even though in some of the companies, you will have a separate network administrator, in most of the companies, uh, you will have a role called a network administrator, but uh, chances are very high that you might want to make some decisions at some times. IP addressing, subnetting, switching, routing up to an extent, right? Uh, virtual LAN configurations. So these kind of things, at least you need to have a basic idea. Now I'm saying if you want to become a Hadoop administrator, a job, you know, so you want to be a Hadoop admin as a job, then these things should be there. Otherwise, if you're just learning Hadoop administration, just to understand how Hadoop is working or you know, just for your own understanding, then you don't have to be an expert on these areas, right? And many a times, some level of knowledge on cloud computing, this is also expected from the administrators. Now, why you are supposed to have some uh, knowledge on cloud computing? Because many of the uh, uh, proof of concept uh, Hadoop clusters are on the cloud. So uh, in, in many organizations, what happens is that when, when uh, they have to set up a Hadoop cluster for experimental purpose, right? So let's say your client uh, uh, comes one day and say that, you know, uh, I just need to uh, uh, set up a four node Hadoop cluster so that I can just see how it is working, you know? So you are you are creating kind of like a proof of concept uh, cluster. In, in that situation, most of the times we prefer the cloud. So that it is easy. Cloud is something which you can 
dispose anytime, right? So once you create it, you can delete it, right? So uh, in, in even in interviews these days, a lot of admin interviews, uh, uh, in, in admin, admin interviews, uh, the candidates get a question, do you have any knowledge on cloud computing? Okay, so that is very important. I, I suggest you take up some uh, uh, you know, uh, material or course or some learning on cloud, which is because anyway, cloud is going to help you. Now, when you look at cloud uh, uh, as a major stake, you have uh, Amazon Web Services, somebody called AWS. Uh, and then you also have something called uh, Microsoft uh, Azure. And there is Google Cloud, which is gaining a lot of popularity. So any of the cloud platform is fine as long as you are able to set up the cluster on the cloud, right? I mean, this is the basic idea. So when I say Hadoop administration, what what uh, what is the idea is that it's a whole different world altogether where you are installing, troubleshooting, and messing with the machines. You ensure that systems are running 24 by 7. And, and it is actually Hadoop administration itself is a you know whole different course. Right, so there is a course called Hadoop administration as well, which which concentrate a lot on all these aspects. Right, so Hadoop administration, uh, uh, but uh, we will be covering uh, almost all the uh, major parts of Hadoop administration in our course. The first topic of any administration class will be how to install a cluster. Right, so um, you know how can you uh, install a cluster from scratch? given uh, three machines or four machines or 10 machines, how will you be able to create a cluster, right? So that is the first uh, question that everybody asks. And what we are going to do, we are going to install a Cloudera cluster on EC2. So what do you mean by EC2? This is basically Amazon Web Services, okay? Uh, I will tell you, I will show you what is EC2. EC2 stands for Elastic Compute Cloud. Uh, it's a part of Amazon Web Services offering. So we will set up uh, a Cloudera cluster on the cloud, on Amazon especially. And I will show you what you have to do in case if you want to do it on your own. It's actually very easy. So today we will be only installing the cluster. So uh, let's look into this, right? Installing a Cloudera cluster on EC2. And the best way to uh, uh, look at it is uh, actually uh, doing it practically, right? So rather than uh, theoretically talking about uh, installing the Cloudera cluster, let's do this practically. Now, obviously, this installation is going to be on the cloud. So you will naturally have a question, how are we going to do it? Since it is Amazon Cloud, Amazon Web Services official website. Now pay attention from here onwards, we are starting the journey to set up the cluster. So you might want to uh, concentrate on what I'm doing. So basically, uh, what is this? Um, this is the uh, AWS, uh, what you say, website. So this, uh, if you just Google for aws.amazon.com, you will land on this site. Now, uh, you need to have an account with Amazon. Obviously, if you want to set up uh, on the cloud, then ideally you need to have an account with Amazon. So how do you create an account is very simple. Uh, there are many ways, but if you go to the menu, so here is the menu, right? Uh, there is something called a cloud computing. And here in the getting started section, you have something called the AWS free tier. So I'm just expanding this. There is something called, oops, I think I missed the menu. If you go to the menu, there is Amazon and cloud computing. And if you scroll down in this, okay, there is something called AWS free tier under getting started. Now what Amazon actually does, they give you a one year free trial on the cloud platform, which is basically a, a marketing gimmick because the free, free trial does not give you anything useful. It's completely useless, but try to sign up, right? Anyway, since Amazon is giving, because in the free tier, Basically what they do is that if I click on this free tier, I'll show you what they are doing. So I'll just click on here and there is an option, create a free account. So what you need to do, click on this button, sign up with Amazon, okay? 
uh, now during the sign up process you have to give your credit card details otherwise they won't allow you to sign up okay so i think i can show you this probably if i opened in some other window this is important you open this ad browser so what if i type here sorry give me a moment yeah so if i say create a free account again okay. uh, i don't know why it is not working yeah so it's working let me let me let me show you what is what they will ask if you want to create a free account so you have to give a account name email address password and confirm password so let's say you give something like raghu123456 email addresses password is something like this okay. and something you can give city can be i don't know bangalore karnataka something yeah so they're going to definitely ask you for the uh, credit card details you cannot sign up with Amazon without a credit card or debit card, okay? Uh, and uh, there is no other way. There is no shortcut. There is no easy way. You must provide your credit card or debit card when you're signing up. But basically, do that, do that, okay? Give your credit or debit card, and they will deduct a dollar from your account, and they will give it back also just to verify your card. And then you will have an Amazon account. Very simple. So step number one, create a free account with amazon okay step number one so first thing you need is an account and do that and actually what is the idea behind this aws free tier amazon is ideally giving you one year of free access to all their products okay but it's kind of like a, a bit of uh, uh, tricky because they say that this ec2 amazon's ec2 is actually uh, uh, you know servers or virtual machines on the cloud ec2 is actually virtual machines on the cloud and they say that they will give you 750 hours of uh, ec2 on the cloud but the problem is that you will be getting only machines with 1 gb ram that is not enough right if i want to set up a cloud era cluster i need at least 8 gb ram machine which means you will get charged so the free tier is only good for trial you know the free tier the one year free account with amazon is only good at looking at the products it's not really good at uh, creating anything useful i believe uh, because the ec2 instances themselves are just 1 gb ram so it doesn't make any difference and please take a disclaimer from me you will get charged if you set up uh, if you follow whatever i am doing and set up a cloud era cluster on amazon you will be charged on your credit card or debit card it's not free i don't know any other alternative i'm sorry i'm really sorry right i could have taken google cloud or uh, azure they give a better uh, solution i'm aware of that uh, but there are some inherent issues with uh, cloud era which i'm not able to figure it out and that is why i'm using amazon okay but i think you can spend a bit of money uh, in learning you know it is fine i mean they won't rob you i mean you might have to pay some amount but that's fine if you want to learn you have to invest something right Okay, so uh, step number one, you create an account with uh, Amazon, right? Um, so, no, so so the idea is, see, you get one year of free subscription with Amazon. During this time, certain products are free, okay? When I say certain products in uh, the virtual machines, they will give you a, one, a particular type of virtual machine with one GB RAM. That is absolutely free. They won't charge you. So after one year, they will start charging for even this VM. But like I said, practically this is useless because whatever free options they are giving you is at very basic level. So if somebody has to build a real product, then they have to obviously uh, pay the money, right? So charges, I'll give you a rough idea. 
So after an year or any time when you want to delete a, your account, you can send a mail to Amazon. They will disable it. Use this service called EC2. Can you see something called EC2 under uh, computer category? Uh, that is EC2 is basically Elastic Compute Cloud. It's Amazon's virtual machines on the cloud. So what is cloud computing? Cloud computing is uh, an area of IT wherein you can rent anything, right? So basically you are going to Amazon and asking Amazon, hey Amazon, give me some machines for rent so that I can set up a cluster. That is what is what are you doing in cloud computing, right? So EC2 is the server or virtual machine that Amazon offers. So what we are going to do now, we will set up our cluster first, okay, using EC2. I mean, EC2 are your servers or virtual machines. We will set up our cluster first. And once we have our machines ready, we will install Hadoop on them, Cloudera flavor of Hadoop on them so that we can start working on them, configuring on them, so on and so forth. So that is basically what we are going to do, okay? Now, regarding the charges, okay? The, the charges for Amazon depends on many, many things actually. I have to pay if I'm using Amazon. See, there are certain things you have to be aware of. We are going to set up a three node cluster on AWS. So basically we are asking for three machines to Amazon, right? So we are going to set up a three node machine. Now each machine will have somewhere around 60 GB RAM, okay, something around 40 GB hard disk. This is the configuration I'm asking and Amazon will give me this. Uh, and some, I think, quad-core processor. So this is the configuration of each machine. Now, what you need to understand about Amazon is that Amazon will bill you as long as you are running the machine, which means if you start the machine till you shut it down, they are going to bill you. Okay, so what you are supposed to do is start working on the cluster and once you are uh, done something on the cluster shut down the machines do not keep them running if you keep them running you will be charged for every minute okay so it's it's easy actually because uh, you know what you are supposed to do probably you may take 2 hours to uh, install the cluster today so let's say you are trying to install the cluster today right you may take 2 hours to do this right once you install the cluster, probably you don't want to work on the cluster right now. Maybe you are busy. Just shut down the machines. Maybe tomorrow you can come and start them again and then start working on them. Right? So basically, as long as you are running the machines, you will be charged. Point number one. Point number two, for the hard disk, right? For the hard disk, Amazon will charge you 24 bar 7 whether you are running the machine or the machine is shut down, the permanent storage is always charged, but it is very less since we are having only a very 40 GB hard disk. They won't charge you much. They will charge you very less, actually. Now the question will be how much they will charge if I am running the machine, right? Uh, based on the system we are requesting to Amazon, roughly they will charge a dollar for a machine so that means three machines means three dollar per hour so if you are running it for three hours it will be nine dollars okay one dollar per machine uh, per hour that is roughly the amount i can give you so my recommendation to you will be that set up the cluster and then then uh, you know use it whenever you want if you are not using this uh, cluster then shut it down right so that is basically what uh, is my recommendation, okay? So for me, it is zero uh, rupees as of now because it's a new month, right? So if I look at my last month payment history, I have an invoice which is due for 714 rupees actually, which is very cheap actually, okay? 
if you go to my payment history you can see that i have paid uh, 3000 rupees in uh, you know i think september or somewhere you know, some somewhere around that right so so sometimes i mean i use it a lot right yeah so you will land on this page basically uh, and what you are supposed to do on this page is click on this button called launch instance an instance is a virtual machine okay so when you say launch instance it means launch a virtual machine right very simple so what you're supposed to do is just click on this launch instance and now you can configure your virtual machine obviously when you are asking for a virtual machine uh, from amazon it should have an operating system and that is given to you by this ami amazon machine image so basically amazon is asking what operating system you want um, in the virtual machine so there are multiple options linux red hat suse microsoft windows server 2016 ubuntu there are many options for the operating system but what i use for this particular exercise is the ubuntu 14 edition and that is not available in this page so what you need to do is that click on this aws marketplace there is a button here called aws marketplace so this is like where like your google play store where you can download a software here you can search for Ubuntu. So just search for Ubuntu, hit enter. And you will see the Ubuntu Server 14. So use the Ubuntu Server 14. The latest version is 16. We don't want 16, just keep it 14. And just click on select. And it will probably ask you to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, agree the license agreement just say continue okay so what is step number one step number one is choosing your ami meaning choosing your operating system search for ubuntu and uh, then uh, select the 14 version that's it step number two is choose an instance type or basically this is your hardware okay as you can see some of the options are grayed out because uh, the operating system we have selected will work only with specific uh, hardware configuration uh, on Amazon. Uh, but basically, these are all the configuration. For example, <clears throat> you can look at the CPU. So the first machine is having one CPU core, 512 MB RAM. Second machine has one CPU, one GB RAM, so on and so forth. Now, if I scroll down to the options, what we are supposed to use is uh, where is it mm. i think they removed it actually because we had an mx large let me check okay m32x mm. large it's 8 gb Sorry. Yeah, here it is. I mean, I got confused. Uh, here it is. Choose this uh, M3X large. Okay. So just tick the mark here. What this means is that you will be getting four processor cores and 15 uh, GB of RAM. Okay. So we are going to choose a quad core processor and 15 gb ram okay you will also get uh, 80 gb solid state drive ssd but we will not be using that okay we will be creating our own hard disk um, so choose this m3 x latch say next on the next page there are many things but i don't want to explain all of them it's not related to what we are doing all you need to do is that in the number of instances make it three the first option, number of instances, make it three. Uh, if you want to try with four, make it four. I just want to try it with three, so I just make it three right now. Okay, so just make sure that 
you are having uh, three uh, what do you say uh, instances okay so right now you have three and then you say uh, and don't make any change to any other configuration say add storage so this is the place where you are going to uh, you know uh, uh, you know mention the size of the uh, hard disk okay so by default you get an 8 gb hard disk change it to 4040 why 40 there is no rule i just kept it 40 uh, in, normally when you install a cloud era cluster it takes some space on the uh, machine 40 gb is a good number so i just give 40 gb hard disk so basically you will be getting a 40 gb hard disk in here next there is an option called uh, add uh, tags uh, don't do anything there skip this don't make any changes there <clears throat> and the last option is something called uh, configure security group this is really really important now why this is important see what amazon does is that whenever you are creating any virtual machine with amazon basically ec2 instance right the virtual machine will be running uh, in amazon's uh, data center right obviously the vm will be running in amazon's data center and then you are supposed to connect uh, with the vm right so what you are supposed to do you are supposed to uh, connect with the uh, vm right so amazon allows you to create this thing called security group it is a, a machine level firewall so basically you can allow or deny any port numbers used on the security group and by default as you can see it is written ssh is allowed so here you can see ssh and that is allowed ssh is used to connect to the machine right so when you create uh, a setup in amazon cloud ideally you will be able to connect only using ssh and we don't want to do that we are just doing experiment so as of now what you need to do change this to all traffic so when you say all traffic okay what is going to happen is that amazon will allow all the traffic from outside world to these vms and in a in a real production world don't do that okay but since we are experimenting right now we can allow all the traffic to uh, come to the vm so select all traffic in this page this is basically the uh, virtual machine level firewall uh, so change this to all traffic so that uh, all the traffic can hit our cluster because you are connecting to the cluster from your home the cluster is actually in amazon's data center right unless you enable this you will not get any connectivity go to review and launch and then you are ready to launch your machines <clears throat> now you can clearly see a warning there your instance configuration is not eligible for the free usage tier so what amazon is saying here is that you know uh, the machines you have selected will not fall under free usage you will be paid you will be billed for that that is basically what Amazon is saying. And then we are okay with that, not a big deal actually. Uh, so this is what we are basically going to do it. And it is optional. What I'm saying is that it's not mandatory that you should do it, okay? Because like I said, unless you want to be uh, a Hadoop administrator, if you don't do this also fine, but at least pay attention to what I'm doing so that uh, See, even I'm uh, getting charged, right? I'm not doing this for free. Uh, I'm paying from my personal account for setting up this. But I just want to show you this, right? Now, uh, no, Amazon does not use so cheap machines. Okay, They have good machines, actually. Now, another question that you may ask is that, what if I don't want to use cloud? Can I set it up locally uh, using virtual machines? Yes, you can do that. What if I don't want to use Amazon? Can I uh, install the cluster on my virtual box or VMware? Yes, it is possible. But the only problem is you are going to set up a three node cluster. In that, one will become master. 
when i say master that will be running the name node that will be running the resource manager and it will be running something called cloudera manager also so that machine requires 10 gb ram okay the rest of the two machines slave machines can have 4 to 8 gb ram so even if you give 4 gb ram to the slave machines you need 10 plus 8 18 gb ram to set it up you can do this using virtual machines but you need a good amount of ram since you are not most of you are not having that that is why i am using the uh, aws uh, console to set it up okay so what we did uh, if i have to summarize first we selected the ami or the operating system i selected ubuntu 14 doesn't mean like it will work only on ubuntu you can use centos or anything then we went for the instance type which is the hardware configuration i selected uh, uh, 16 gb ram quad core processor instance because we need good amount of uh, performance for that <clears throat> third what we did we uh, uh, we told amazon that we need three instances actually in configuring the instance then we added uh, 40 gb hard disk to all the uh, machines uh, then we configured the security group to allow all the traffic to pass and now we are ready to launch the instance this is the place where we are supposed to launch the instance right so uh okay so let me just delete this okay account and and like i said if you follow whatever i am doing and you try to experiment with the aws cloud then your charges will be minimal i don't think you will get uh, highly charged i mean uh, you will be charged a certain amount but not really uh, uh, a high amount right so you can probably uh, you know uh, follow the same thing that i am doing if you are interested in setting up a cluster around the cloud now if you don't want to become a hadoop admin right you're just interested on only in the developer activity uh, but it's always good to have a knowledge as to how these things are working right even if you're working as a developer if somebody asks you like how a cloud data cluster will be set up or some thoughts on that so it will be good that you know the process i'm sure you enjoyed learning from this video please like the video and if you have any doubts regarding this video please comment us in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such informative videos do look out for other related videos in our playlist for more information visit our website now keep learning with intellipat